Hello, dear students. This is the meeting for the week number four. I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint with the information for with the lecture of this week, but I will also speak about different aspects for this week. First of all, I, I want to say that I'm very happy with the reports that I received. All the reports are pretty good. Um, and I think that in the following weeks, everything will be better. This week we have a quiz for, uh, for Tuesday. Also, we have a worksheet with some uh, uh, questions that I want you to send me to my email and uh, the lab report. The, the video of this week for the lab is very clear and you will have all the uh, data and everything is explained step by step. Um, as always, you will have the, the homework that will be for Thursday at 10 p.m. And next week on Monday, we are going to have the first exam. Then uh, what I mean is uh, in July, the, the, the first day, the first uh, Monday, of July will be the first exam. I will prepare a review, a video like this, uh, with some activities, or maybe uh, I will send you some exercises, some uh, types of exercises that will help you to uh, study. But let's begin with the chapter number four. We are going to speak today about elements atoms and ions. In the periodic table, until this moment, we know 118 elements. 88 of them are in the environment. The rest of the elements are produced in the labs. Uh, the only nine elements are the most uh, compounds that we found in the earth. Night elements are over the 98% of the total mass of the earth crust, the oceans and the atmosphere. Uh, here you can see how oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, hydrogen are the elements that represent most of the, of, of the earth. When I say the earth, I'm talking about the surface or the, or the oceans or the atmosphere. Uh, what is exactly an element? An element is a single atom and can be represented by uh, the letters. For example, here we have argon and hydrogen. They, if they join together, the atoms can join together and, and make molecules. For example, two atoms of hydrogen make other molecule. Uh, that is what we found in natural state as hydrogen. But uh, some elements are present in elemental form or in uh, making compounds. The, the names of the elements and the symbols. Each element has a unique one or two letter symbol. The first letter is always in the capital case. 
The second one is lowercase. The symbol usually consists of the first or the first two letters of the element. For example, oxygen is represented by O. Krypton is represented by CR. Sometimes the symbol is taken from the element's uh, original Latin or Greek name. For example, gold is a U from, from this name that comes from Latin, or lead is, is, is taken from this name, plumbum. That's why it is PB, and it doesn't have to be with the name in English. Here you have the names and symbols of most common elements. By the way, I send you a periodic table that you can print and you have all the information you need to work. Most um, uh, natural materials are mixtures of pure substances. Pure substances are either elements or combination of elements called compounds. A given compound always contains the same proportions by mass of the elements. The law of content composition says that a given compound always has the same composition regardless of where it comes from. For example, water doesn't matter if, if it is in the in in form of a liquid, gas, or solid. It contains always eight grams of oxygen and one gram of hydrogen. Carbon dioxide always contains 2.7 grams of oxygen for every gram of carbon. The Dalton's Atomic theory says that elements are made of tiny particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical. They are the same. The atoms of a given element are different from those of any other element. And the atoms of one element can combine with atoms of the other elements to form compounds. For example, here we have that uh, nitrogen monoxide is made by one atom of nitrogen and one atom of oxygen. While nitrogen dioxide is made of two atoms of oxygen per one of nitrogen and so on. Atoms are not possible to be divided. You cannot divide a, an atom by chemical process. Atoms are not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. In a chemical, in a chemical reaction simply changes the way the atoms are joined together. Okay. Here you have a question. Which of the following statements regarding that Dalton's atomic theory are still believed to be true? Elements are made of a tiny particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical. A given compound always has the same relative number of types of atoms, or atoms are indestructible. Well, the answer is these two. What is a formula, a chemical formula? Well, a compound uh, is a substance that is compound by two uh, uh, atoms or more of the same element or different elements but they contains always exactly the same relative masses of those elements. As I showed you before, 
The chemical formulas express the types of atoms and the number of each type in each unit or molecule or a, of a given compound. For example, here we have the symbol for sulfur and the symbol for oxygen. Here you have one atom, you don't write the one, but you consider that there is a one in here and it expresses that there is only one atom of sulfur per three atoms of oxygen. Here we have an exercise. The pesticide known as DDT paralyzes insects by binding to their nerve cells, leading to uncontrolled firing of the nerves. Before most of the uses of DDT were and in the US, many insects had developed a resistance to it. Write out the formula of DDT. It contains 14 grams of atoms, of carbon atoms, nine hydrogen atoms, and five uh, atoms of chlorine. Well, the formula is you, you write the symbols of the elements and the subscripts indicate the number of atoms of each compound. Uh, Tolson in, in the 19th century, at the beginning of the 20th century, by the way, showed that the atoms can be made of, uh, can be made to emit tiny negative particles. These particles were known as electrons and concluded that the atom must also contain positive particles that balance exactly the negative charge carried by electrons. So Thomson discovered the electrons and he says that the atom was uh, were neutral. So if they have a number of electrons, they will have the same number of positive charges. Until that moment, protons weren't known yet. William Thompson used the plum pudding model to express the uh, structure of the atom uh, according with the knowledge he had from the atom. He represented a mass that he considered positive. And among this mass were the electrons that were negative. Like, a, like the plum in a pudding. Of course, this model was wrong, but it was an advance by that time. Ernest Rutherford conducted an experiment of alpha particles bombardment on a metal foil. Uh, and he concluded that the plum padding model was wrong that the iron has a dense center of positive charge that he called nucleus. And the electrons travel around the nucleus at a relative large distance. A proton has the same magnitude of charge as electron, but its charge is positive. Most nuclei also contain a neutral particle called the neutron. A neutron is a slightly more massive than a proton, but has no charge. The atom contains then electrons, negative, and are found outside the nucleus in a cloud. Protons are found in the nucleus and they have positive charge with the same magnitude in charge than the electron, but uh, is negative. 
neutrons are found in the nucleus with no charge and virtually has the same mass as a proton, maybe a little higher than a proton, but slightly higher. Then we can see here in this table that the electron has a mass of one, while the proton and the neutron are very, very, uh, or are heavier than an electron. The charge of the uh, electron is negative one, the charge of the proton is positive one, and the neutron has no charge. This uh, relative mass is, 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 uh, are, uh, is not the real mass, it's just a comparison. So uh, that you can see that protons and neutrons are heavier than electrons. Why do different atoms have different chemical properties? Well, the chemistry of an atom arises from X electrons. Electrons are the parts of the atoms that it combines or interact with other atoms to make molecules. It is the number of electrons that really determines the chemical behavior. Then remember, electrons, and in especially a special group of electrons that I will speak about later, are the ones that deter determine the chemical behavior. Isotopes are atoms of the same number of protons of the same element, and I'm talking about one element can have atoms with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Even though they are the same atom, one are heavier than the others. They show almost identical chemical properties. The chemistry of an atom is two to X electrons. So it doesn't matter if it has more or less neutrons for the chemical behavior. In nature, elements are usually found as a mixture of isotopes. For example, here we have sodium 23 and sodium 24. The 23 is the atomic mass and 11 is the atomic number. What is the difference between these two atoms? Uh, the number of neutrons. Here you have 12 neutrons, while you ha have here 13 neutrons. The number of electrons and protons cannot change. Because if, if they change, you are in front of a different element. For example, you can represent an atom by the symbol. In this case, I will put an X. A is the atomic mass and Z is the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons. A is the atomic mass and represents the number of protons plus neutrons. So if I give you these two numbers, you can say, and I ask you, what is the number of protons? You say, you look at the atomic number, you say the number of protons is the same number, atomic number. And as the atom is neutral, the number of protons and electrons are equal. And how can you calculate the number of neutrons? Subtracting the atomic mass minus the atomic number. It gives you the atomic, the, sorry, the number of neutrons. 
here you have the number, the atomic number and the atomic mass for two isotopes of carbon. In this case, you have six protons because the atomic number is six. Same thing here. What is the difference? That the atomic mass is here is 14. Then you say 14 minus six protons is equal to eight neutrons. Here, six, sorry, 12 minus six protons give you six neutrons. Let's do this exercise. A certain isotope contains 23 protons and 28 neutrons. What is the mass number of this isotope? And identify the element. Well, the mass number is uh, obtained by adding protons plus neutron is 51. And the element with atomic number 23 is vanadi vanadium. You can go to the periodic table that I provided and you can find that 50 C 51 correspond to vanadium. Look, you come here and you say, well, vanadium is. 51, 50, sorry. Let me go back because if 51, okay? Then you come here and you, you find out that uh, the atomic number, the element with atomic number 51 is vanadium. Here, what you're lo looking is the atomic number because the periodic table is a representation of the elements in, in the order of increasing atomic number. That's why you begin by hydrogen number one, and then helium number two, lithium three, beryllium four, boron five, carbon six, nitrogen seven, oxygen eight, and fluorine nine and so on. The periodic table is divided in columns. These columns are known as groups and are divided in periods. Period one, period two, period three, and also is divided into types of elements. Representative are made by group 1A and 2A plus 3A, 4A until 8A. This block and this block make the representative element. The block in between are the transition elements. In the bottom of the table, you can find the lactinized and the actinized. Then, the periodic tables are also, also divided metals from non metals. Groups or families that are the columns and periods that are the horizontal rows of the element. Look at here, this zigzag line divides no metal from metals. As you can see, most of the elements are metals. And in between the blue ones are the metalloids. They have properties of both, of non-metals and metals. Well, the metals are very good conductors of heat and electricity. They present malleability. That is that they can be hammered 
into thin sheets. Ductility, that they can be pulled into wires and lustrous appearance. Most of the uh, metals are gray and brilliant, shiny. While the non-metals are have a, a very a different kind of properties. They can be gases, liquid, or solids at room temperature. Uh, they, the metalloids, are a mixture of metallic and non-metallic properties. In the the in the natural state, the elements are very reactive. Elements are not generally found in pure form because of this reactivity. Ex exceptions are the novel metals like gold, platinum, and silver, and the novel gases that are in group 8A. The diatomic uh, molecules are made of two atoms of the same element. For example, nitrogen and oxygen. Elements that exist as diatomic molecules uh, are, for example, hydrogen, that is a colorless gas, nitrogen, that is a colorless gas, Oxygen, that is a pale blue gas. Fluorine, that is a pale yellow gas. Chlorine, that is a pale green gas. Bromine or bromine, that is reddish brown liquid. And iodine, that is lustrous dark purple solid. Iodine is not the liquid that is sold at the pharmacy, that is a solution. The allotropes are different forms of the given element. For example, carbon can be in three different ways, diamond, graphite, and this compound that you can find here. Yeah, you can see the, the distribution of the atoms in the space for diamond that makes a very hard uh, structure, maybe one of the hardest in the environment. While graphite is made of layers and this is the Backmeister Fullerene. The, the ions, what are ions? Are atoms electro, electrically charged. And it can happen because the atoms can lose electrons and be converted into positive ions while a non-metal used to gain electrons and are converted into negative uh, atoms. The alkaline metals group 1A have always a charge of positive one. What does it mean? That they usually lose one electron and are converted into a cation positive one. The alkaline earth metals in group 2A usually lose two electrons and they make a cation with charge positive two. Halogens in group 7A usually gain one electron making and ions negative one, while noble gases 
don't gain or lose electrons and they are in atomic form. So in neutral uh, way. Here you can see the most characteristic charges in the periodic table. Group one, positive one. Group two, positive two. Group three, positive three. Group six, positive negative two. And group seven, negative one. Exercise. An ion may, with a positive three charge contains 23 elements. With which ion is it? Well, first of all, you have to go to the periodic table and see the element with, a, if they make 20, if they have 23 electrons and the charge is plus three is because a, if it has lost three electrons, then three plus 23 is 26 protons is the atomic number. What is the element with atomic number 26? Iron. A certain ion positive one contains 44 electrons and 28 neutrons. Well, you say positive one, it contains one more um, elect uh, one more electron that was lost. So 44 plus one is 45 electrons and protons that are equal. So 55 plus 78 is equal to 133. That's the atomic mass that is obtained by adding protons plus neutron. Ionic compounds are those that are made by ions. They, the properties of ionic compounds are high melting points. Conduct electricity only if they are melted or dissolved in water. The ionic compounds are electrically neutral. The charges on the ions and cations in the compound must sum to zero. For example, in this compound, you have two positive and two negative. Well, the Compound net charge is zero. A compound contains an unknown ion X and has the formula XCR2. A ion X contains 20 electrons. What is the identity of a X? Then you say 22 electrons. And if it is negative one, is because this is positive two, then two plus 20 is 22. And the element with atomic number 22 is titanium. A member of a clean earth metal whose most stable co contains 36 atoms form a compound with bromine. What is, what is the correct formula of the compound? Well, this is, you can stop the video and, and try to solve this by yourself. Well, that's all for today. See you next week.